Alright, howdy folks. Today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about Eugen's new RTS, Warno. I made an apparently highly controversial video recently in which I compared Warno a few days after its release to Regiments. Now Regiments is a new RTS that really reminds me of Company of Heroes if it was mixed with World in Conflict. However, the one-man Regiments dev team has come out and said multiplayer will not really be a focus of the game. Regiments will, however, feature a lot of single-player content. Their latest playtest, which showcases gameplay of their operations game mode, is very interesting and has a lot of replayability. I do enjoy playing PvP in some RTS games like World in Conflict or Men of War, but personally I just prefer a PvE or co-op setting in most of my RTS games. Hence why I kind of have a hard time liking Warno as much as I'd like to right now, with there really only being four maps to play PvP or PvE on. After having checked out all four of these maps in Warno, having both played the Soviet and American decks available currently, I feel like if I'm going to just be putting the game aside for a little while until they've made some progress towards their scripted operations or the PvE and PvP Army General campaigns. The Division 2's Army General campaigns evolved over time into a very unique and fun part of the Division 2, especially adding PvP and co-op, including three-player co-op, has surprised me in a very positive way and has really extended, I think, Steel Division 2's life cycle. Warno's devs have been absolutely on the ball regarding new updates and changes and fixes to Warno as the Eugen Discord is full of those change logs, fixes, and the like. Some things about Warno as a base game I also really enjoy, such as the ability to automatically sell unarmored transports, such as trucks or jeeps, after you dismount the infantry inside, or being able to set it so anti-tank guided missiles or ATGMs aren't wasted on unarmed transport vehicles. I will also say that Warno somehow improved on War Game Red Dragon's already pretty great graphics. Personally for me, Steel Division 1 was a little too cartoonish, with Steel Division 2 looking quite decent actually. Warno seems to go a step above with really nice missile trails, smoke that looks great and lingers for a while, and different destruction effects on vehicles. Warno's infantry models also look fantastic, and I feel like this really has to be mentioned, especially compared to Red Dragon, but even heavily outclassing, in my personal opinion, Steel Division's two infantry models. Now some recon units also have the ability to spawn ahead of the spawn zones, which is a nice touch, but I hope that this is reserved for weaker recon units, or maybe even unarmed recon units, and not the super prototype power for recon units like the Comanche or the KA-52. Now last but not least, a great addition to me personally is the fact that aircraft don't appear on the map instantly when called in, but take time to arrive and then time to return back to base after their combat sortie, which keeps air spam down somewhat, and also feels like it makes it more important to have a constant fighter up to deal with enemy aircraft. In conclusion for this video, I would like to say that I'm actually genuinely very excited for the future of Warno in 2022 with other factions, single player content, all that awesome stuff yet to come. I just feel like it just needs a little bit more time in the developer's oven for me to feel like it is on par with Wargame Red Dragon or other great RTS titles. So this year we can expect Company of Heroes 3, Regiments, Broken Arrow, Rattenreich, and a whole bunch of other RTS games either come out or release in some sort of early access. Warno is looking like it actually rank near the top of my best RTS games of 2022 list with some much needed additional content and fixes. To showcase Warno's amazing graphics, I'll let you enjoy some more of this replay without my voice. Cheers.